Thanks, Manju, and good afternoon. Hopefully, you've all had a great week at APU 13. How's it been? It's been good? That's fantastic seeing the energy. It's fantastic just seeing the interchange going on, the dialogue, the dialogue on heterogeneous computing, which you know, was really just absent just several years ago. I mean, it just, when you think about the progression, when you look at just this week, and you look at uh, what are the articles being written about what you talked about at APU 13 this week, it tells a story. It tells a story about new devices. Uh, you know, we're, this is what we're focused about at AMD. How do we create the engines that accelerate uh, this whole era of, uh, you know, with, uh, with heterogeneous computing? And so, we, you know, announcing Kaveri, announcing uh, the APU for the server, which we think will, you know, provide you know, significant cloud compute advantages. Uh, talking about Java, uh, Nandini Ramani, uh, talking about uh, the advances in Java 8 and Java 9 uh, to really leverage heterogeneous computing and APUs. It's been an exciting week. And, you know, when I think back uh, to 18 months ago, I had the, uh, the pleasure and honor of giving a keynote at Hot Chips. And, you know, I talked about what uh, Manju mentioned it. I called it surround computing. We called it that we were actually hitting an inflection point where it was going to be a whole change in how we interface with computing. And, you know, we talked about uh, some of those signs, the advent of this change. We talked about, you know, just at that time 18 months ago uh, with uh, Connect, with uh, Google Voice, with Siri, that there were starting to be those signs of surround computing, changing how we leverage uh, technology to interface in such a more a seamless way. But let's look at even the last year. Let's look at some of the advancements that have come out. Uh, I am thrilled, uh, you know, when you look at the AMD engines underneath these new consoles coming out, I can't imagine a better embodiment of surround computing. Uh, you know, you just, you just see some of these games uh, on these engines, it's going to be incredible, incredible. When you look at uh, virtual reality, uh, you heard from Brennan earlier on uh, Oculus. I, I played this last week uh, as I had the, you know, the headset on, the Oculus gear on a, a beautiful display, and it's surround gaming. I mean, it's incredible. You are in the experience. Uh, you are, you are surrounded 360 degrees. It's a completely different experience than what we've had here to date. And you look at, uh, you know, the drive that we have uh, to leverage this even in our day-to-day our -day, uh, technology. You look at the AMD-enabled uh, tablets. Uh, the AMD uh, PCs are out there. They have the voice recognition, have the gesture recognition, uh, the beautiful displays that we're driving. At the, you know, the, the, the rise of the 4K displays is truly amazing. As the price goes down, and the, the quality is simply amazing. At CES in January, uh, we showed a demo called Surround House, and it was a true 360-degree experience. Uh, and you know, it was powered by you know, our you know, uh, off-the-shelf uh, AMD technology. And I'll, I'll, I'll put a little uh, teaser out there. So it had all of the you know, surround uh, you know, audio, surround uh, video capability. It was pretty exciting. Uh, please come visit us. Uh, at uh, January 2014 CES, uh, we've got uh, a lot more to come here. So round two, round two. And true audio, I'll talk about uh, in a little bit more detail in, in, uh, in just a moment. Okay, well, you know, how do we get there in this journey? Well, it does start with looking through Windows uh, and, and, you know, the tablet devices through the PCs through, you know, even uh, big screen experiences that we have today uh, you know, that is, that's the start of it, and frankly, at every turn, we're making it a more uh, beautiful experience, a more natural experience. Uh, so, we're, you know, we're making, you know, tremendous progress here. But I challenge you. I challenge you to think about, as a development community, as technology developers, what's next. And what's next is uh, really thinking about it differently, right? Let's break out of those conventions and let's think about this instead of Windows, instead of a, you know, a more you know, a direct interface onto a single display, right? Let's think about it as building doors. 
building portals into a different experience because that's what surround computing is. It's about enabling a different experience, a different way that we interface with computing, visualization, and compute, right? It's really about bringing in this next era. And there are tremendous opportunities. And, you know, really what I'd like to have you think about is creating a digital realm. You can do this as developers with the technology uh, that is becoming available right now, you can create the digital realms. You can have those high definition screens that can surround you, positional audio that creates that experience of the digital realm. I love this photo, it's just relaxing looking to it. He's holding a corona with a lime in it, you just can't see it because he's facing forward, but it's, it's, this is the scene. This is, this is what I'm looking for uh, with the kind of capability, kind of technology that we're developing. And so what is that technology? Let's spend a few minutes uh, talking about the enablement, right? So it starts with uh, the visual, the visual realism that we're gonna get. You've gotta have uh, the engines to provide the kind of resolution, the kind of rendering uh, real time that, that creates that visual realism. You've gotta have very high resolution displays. Uh, it's, it, you know, it's, it, it's gotta come hand in hand with it. The audio has to match. You want, you, you have, if, if, if you have all the visualization without the audio, it's not a, it's not a surround uh, experience. And lastly, you've got to make it easier. It's got to be more natural is how we're interfacing with computing. And you've got to be able to trust that your data, your personal data, your work data is secure. So it's all of those elements that as a technology and development community that we've got to provide. And that's how we go through that door and create the digital realm. So let's start with the first one. Uh, we we you know, talk about uh, visualization and, and graphics. Uh, we're very excited uh, in this area. This, this is uh, really a bread and butter for AMD in terms of uh, taking the strength we have, the heritage we have, uh, and creating you know, uh, you know, beautiful graphics and being able to drive more uh, pixels. I mean, frankly, uh, we feel that the industry is now really moving to our strength. When you look at the kind of displays uh, which are out there now, uh, and the, the ability that we can create our rendering engines uh, that we have with, uh, with our Graphics Core Next technology and marry that with our display technology, uh, driving these high resolution displays, we can really show our strength. And what we wanna do is make it easier. Make it easier with APIs. Uh, you just heard from Johan at DICE about Mantle. Look what that's gonna do in terms of taking the kind of optimization of games, I mean, those the effects, he just showed it in a couple of clips, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. And imagine as you make that easier to get that out over a broader range of devices uh, so that you, you have an ultimate experience in your console, uh, but you take it with you. You have it with you on your personal computing, your mobile devices. That's what's in store for us. And it's gotta go beyond that. You know, it's really, it's gotta go uh, into really leveraging uh, the whole set of a APIs. We spent a lot of time uh, talking about heterogeneous system architecture at last year's conference, this year's conference, tremendous advancements in opening this up to C++ AMP, uh, Java, as you heard from, uh, from the earlier speaker. This is the key. Create the technology, make it easy to deploy. So, you know, uh, I wanted to show a couple of facts and figures. Uh, we're gonna, you know, use an example, of course, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna use my example of the uh, R9 290X. Uh, this, this is an amazing set of technology. When you look at five teraflops, five teraflops on a single device, and to think that five years ago, AMD was the first to break the one teraflop barrier. Five years ago, one teraflop, roughly a teraflop per year improvement, and here we are with five teraflops on a single device. And you've gotta feed those engines. Right? You've got to provide a very, very high memory bandwidth. I mean, you've got uh, you know, the, really the capability of 300 gigabyte per second feeding this engine. That's, that's a 20x improvement in just over 10 years. Four billion triangles per second capability with an R9-290X. R9 it's just, it's phenomenal, the draw capability. And so, you know, we forget the rate and pace is, is inexorable and all, you know, you just, you just step back and you look at the facts and figures and you, you realize the engine to create the digital realm, the engines to power surround computing 
are here today. So when I look at uh, display technology, right, uh, and, and you look at the, the pixels uh, bandwidth we have, it, it's not just drawing the pixels. It's about really enabling more, uh, you know, range, more, you know, beautiful uh, uh, range of gamut and, you know, and creating an overall experience. That's what we're focused on in every generation. Create the engine underneath it, powered by our graphics core next technology, uh, create the display technology uh, to, dra to enable the next generation. Uh, with our technology, typically, uh, you know, we're the, we were out there first supporting 4K displays. There's labs working on the next generation of display technology, uh, which are using our graphics, driving it with our graphics. So we're very focused and will remain focused on our graphics uh, technology engines. We've got to continue to drive the, uh, the pixels. But I said earlier, with it is the audio. I mean, that's what brings it to life is when you have that, that uh, spatial audio capability. And, you know, when you think about it, what happens today, you know, when we're just as we're, we're speaking here in the audience, right, you have 360 degree range. If someone, uh, you know, dropped their notebook behind you, you turn around. Well, you want that. You want that in your, in your compute experience. Imagine in gaming, you want to know if someone's coming up behind you, you're going you're gonna to take them out. Uh, you know, imagine and, you know, but think about, you know, beyond gaming, uh, think about uh, what that does in terms of realism in all of your interface with visualization when you have that spatial audio capability. And so, you know, that's what we're focused on. We want to remove the, uh, the, the, the barriers you have like today with a PC level of audio and we're going to bring it right into that capability with Kaveri uh, that you heard, uh, you know, Lisa talking about on Monday, uh, we have added uh, the uh, built-in, uh, you know, audio offload capability uh, that gives you uh, that spatialization, gives you that, th that uh, three, uh, 3D audio capability. Uh, so we're very excited about being able to provide sound that is, in fact, realistic. It's realistic. And it has the physics of sound. What do I mean by that? I'll make an analogy to, to, uh, to graphics. I mean, with uh, Graphics Core Next, and you look at a lot of the games coming out on our technology, a lot of the uh, visual, uh, the, the, the uh, rendering coming out on our technology, you'll see the physics applied. You can actually see strands of hair moving uh, in the rendering with, uh, based on our, our Radeon uh, technology. But the same holds true to audio. There's no reason not uh, to apply the physics to audio. So with an offload engine uh, that we have with True Audio, uh, you can you can hear that reverb. So it's not only that spatial, that 3D spatial, uh, you know, location of sound, but you should be able to hear the reverb. You should be able to hear uh, the, the uh, you know, multiple voices, to, you know, the, just like you do an environment like we're in here today. So it's a much fuller sound capability uh, that we'll provide with our true audio. And, you know, frankly, with, uh, with heterogeneous system architecture, uh, we've created a way to exploit it. Uh, straightforward APIs to be able to exploit, exploit this capability. And when you look at, uh, when you look at True Audio, uh, you know, these, uh, the, from a developer standpoint, uh, we want it to be uh, a, a real straightforward acceleration engine like the GPU. And so that's what we've done. It's, it's uh, certainly beyond gaming uh, by leveraging this API uh, we expect you to get, you know, acoustic uh, correction, uh, just like you can do a video enhancement, you can do acoustical en enhancement, a positioning uh, and positioning adjustment uh, that you can do. And in fact, uh, even the potential of uh, real-time language transition, uh, translation and enhanced voice recognition. So we're very excited about adding uh, true audio into our portfolio of IP. All right, and I want to now uh, talk about uh, what I call the, you know, four elements of, of natural interface, natural and secure, because again, you've got, you, you, you've got to have uh, both elements. And so, uh, you know, the first I'll, I'll talk about is, uh, is hear me, right? And, you know, in fact, even more important than hear me, it's understand me. Do you recognize what I'm trying to do? And so, you know, it is about uh, being able to have things like, uh, you know, wake on command. Um, that's already there today. But understand, be able to actually issue uh, in natural language, a straightforward set of, of instructions, have it understood, it understand my voice, uh, and, and be able to have, uh, you know, a hear resolution, uh, you know, the uh, uh, re resolution that recognizes me 
and the environment I'm in. When I talk about see me, it is that uh, high definition capability that you're gonna be able to play yourself back on, but you want with that the gesture recognition, real time, but you want it fine grained to be natural user interface. It's not coarse movement like we have today, it's natural movement. Right? You want to be able to see the fingers. You want to be able to see the fine grain movement. Right? And you want to be able to have what today is enterpri enterprise class video conferencing. You should be able to have that in your devices that you buy off the shelf at, as a commodity. And that's what we're focused on providing. Know me. You're only going to do this if you trust. If you trust that that uh, other people can't come in and get at your data. I mean, that's uh, obviously a, a very, uh, very hot topic now for everyone in the industry, and, and uh, frankly, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's top of mind internationally. But you know, when you think about some of the best security, it combines multiple elements of recognition. It's fingerprint recognition, but it's face recognition. It's you know, retina recognition, and so know me can bring in uh, you know the the you know the um, ability to do uh, applications like you know, uh, recognizing your preferences and bringing up your environment right away, but it's also a very key element of security. You know, along with show me, right? And that show me is really making sure that whatever we provide in terms of technology enablement, it's on the cloud as well as the client, right? You've got to have that synergy because that's going to be the true enablement of this natural user interface and that's why we're incredibly focused on leveraging our technology, both in dense servers in the cloud, very synergistically with the client devices that you'll be interfacing with. So those are the four areas that, that we believe will actually enable the natural user interface. You know, I want to talk uh, for a moment. I'd be remiss if I don't talk about uh, our IP, our intellectual property. Uh, for me, this, this, is, uh, this is where I spend a huge amount of time because this is our engines. And at AMD, you know, we, we uh, pride ourselves and will continue to focus on leadership enablement. Uh, leadership CPU uh, technology, we've been uh, many, many years of x86, uh, and we were the first to bring a 64-bit uh, to uh, x86 in the market. But we announced last year that we're adding ARM, so we'll have both x86 and ARM in our CPU uh, portfolio. Graphics. We talked about uh, just the, the latest uh, with our GCN implementation with R9. Uh, we'll continue those investments. We'll continue the investment in the enabling software platforms and the associated IP. Uh, this, is, this is the base of the pyramid uh, that we intend to provide our development community with leadership uh, generation after and generation uh, of our AMD products. So I'm going to change gears a little bit. Uh, John, and, uh, at, the, at the outset of the session, said, I want to share a little bit of news on a roadmap, and I do, uh, because we're incredibly excited uh, with a, a, a new SOC, a new APU uh, that we're going to be rolling out in 2014. We'll talk about it more at CE, uh, CES in January, uh, but I wanted to uh, just share with you some of the excitement we have in AMD about the BEMA and Mullins SOCs. You look at the, all the IP I talked about, uh, with our graphics core next and with our, uh, with our CPU lineup and all the enablement that we do. Uh, what we want to do is bring this right down into an even lower power. Same performance, same capabilities uh, that we have uh, today. If you look at, in fact, uh, much more performance per watt, actually a, a 2x performance per watt improvement, but the same kind of graphics core next capability and CPU capability that you have today uh, in our, in our uh, power optimized APUs. So it's, it's uh, you know, an, our focus to be able to bring that AMD APU value proposition right down into the tablet space in a, in a highly optimized way, right? Still having the cloud core, still having the uh, graphics core next, uh, but adding in this power optimization, uh, support for Microsoft Instant Go, and of course, uh, support for security with our AMD uh, Trust Zone implementation. We're very excited about Mullins. Look for more at uh, CES in, in January. It's going to be a very exciting product for us in 2014. So let me, um, let me summarize a little bit. And uh, you, know, you, you, you look about uh, the range of interfaces we talked about, from Mullins optimized uh, tablets uh, right through 
R9 290X uh, 4K multiple displays that we can be powering you know, with that realism, that eye, level, eye uh, definition uh, realism that we talked about. That's what's in front of us. That's what I call you know, really the enablement of surround computing. The engines are there. The capability is there. You saw it this week. You saw it in uh, you know, the, the rollout of each of the, uh, uh, the various uh, demos that you saw today. Uh, you heard from, uh, from Dominic on, uh, on consoles earlier, right? So you're seeing that the, the technology is there now to bring this kind of capability. And you know, my commitment to you as a technology and, a, uh, and as a, a developer's team is let's take the challenge on, let's partner. Let's make surround computing a reality and let's do it right now. Thanks very much, appreciate your time.